on my horse on a dark, drizzly night, waiting for the onset of dawn to attack the enemy. To attack the enemy. These brave warriors, the com com companions, they dislike being cowards. Cowardice was not the attribute. Not like today. Abu Bakr ibn Abi Musa al-Ansari, he heard his father say in the presence of the enemy that the gates of paradise are underneath the shades of swords. So he stood up. A man stood up, worn out clothes, shabby looking. He said, Ya Abu Musa, the jihad is directly from Muhammad. He said, yes, absolutely. The jihad is from Muhammad. He said, yes. This man went and grabbed his sword, went to his companions, I tender you farewell greetings to you. You're not going to see me after today. He broke the scabbard, the sheath of his sword, broke it, threw it away. He's not going to use it again. It's the last time he's going to put it back in his scabbard, in his sheath. He broke it, threw it away, went on the battlefield, fought until we attained or achieved martyrdom. Just one hadith changed his whole life. One narration. Wallahi, they knew, these companions, which we should all know, that the gates of paradise is underneath the shades of swords. They knew that awaits them 100 degrees, 100 stages in paradise. The distance between each two degrees is that which is between the heavens and the earth. They knew that this life is not the real life. But the next life is the real life. When they gave the Pledge of Allegiance, they did not give it as a joke. When they said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they meant that word. They loved that word. They obeyed that word. They implemented its conditions. Like the majority today, La ilaha illallah, he's smoking, he's taking drugs, he's drinking alcohol, he's committing illicit, illicit sex. And he says, La ilaha illallah, I'm La ilaha illallah. Yes. What La ilaha illallah is this? No prayer, no Ramadan, no nothing. He says, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah is going to backlash, going to be thrown back at you. But these companions knew the meaning of La ilaha illallah. So when they took their allegiance, they knew that meant safeguarding, being soldiers in the way of the Almighty Lord until death. Until death. They knew that a journey in the morning or evening, undertaken for jihad, is better than all that the sun rises and sets on. They knew, brothers and sisters, that the peak, the pinnacle, the crest, the highest point, the pivot, the summit of Islam is jihad. They knew that a day and night in a ribat, defending the Islamic territory, is better than fasting the days and praying the nights for an entire month. They knew that paradise awaits them. They knew that the hellfire has been prohibited from touching the eyes that was on watch in the way of Allah Ta'ala. From touching the feet that touched the dust on the battlefield. They knew that the wound that was received on the battlefield, will come on a day of resurrection oozing with blood, oozing as though it happened just then, having the color of blood and the fragrance of musk. They knew that the real life, the best life, is that of a man. This is all narrations in Bukhari and Muslim brothers and sisters. They knew that the best of life is that of a man who is holding his reins, the horse reins, strongly, flying on its back, to the places from whence he hears a war cry or the clatter of arms, flying strongly in order to go on the battlefield and attain martyrdom. They raised the flag of La ilaha illallah, not for worldly gain, not to be called warriors or heroes, not to be known, heard or seen by man, but for the intense love of Allah Ta'ala 
and the intense love of their beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They raised for no other than raising La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. They were the soldiers of the Almighty Lord who defeated the soldiers of the devil. As the Almighty Lord says, Alladina amanu yukatiluna fi sabilillah. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ الطَّاغُوتِ فَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا Those who believe fight in Allah's cause. As for those who disbelieve fight in the cause of the devil. So fight those friends of the devil and feeble indeed are the plots of the devil. Abu Zubair al-Madani who was fighting in Bosnia <coughs> He was killed in one of the <coughs> defense battles while defending the airport in Bosnia. He was known for his beautiful voice, his anashid, which he made for his brothers that died fighting the Russians in 1990, the Afghanistanian brothers. He was known for his talk only about shahada. He would not talk about anything. You know, you want to sit with him, he'll talk about jihad. You want to sit with him, he'll talk about jannah, about Allah Ta'ala. Not about, Wallah, I built a beautiful house on the beach, or I bought a beautiful car today, or I bought this, or then this, or then that. He did not bother himself with worldly issues. He considered it to be futile, trivial, garbage. The only thing he talked about was Allah. What a beautiful person to have company with. Would you not like to be an associate of this person? Would you not like to be? Allah Akbar. Because you are with or like the person you associate with. So don't associate yourself with John Howard or George Bush or Tony Blair. Uh, because it's like associating yourself with the devils. So this person was asked. He was asked. Why do you hurry for martyrdom, shahada, when you haven't done much for Islam? He said, what have my brothers before me given to Islam? Our souls are the most valuable things that we can give to Allah Ta'ala. Our souls are the most valuable things that we can give to Allah Ta'ala. Today, many parents, they prevent their children from attending lessons. They prevent their children from attending lessons. Why? They fear that they might create or place in their hearts the love, just a bit of the love of sacrificing their lives for Allah Ta'ala. Subhanallah al-Azim. They even prevent them. Wallahi, they put a barrier between them and the acts of worship. When they pray and they believe that this prayer might lead them to what they believe uh, is garbage, futile, a'udhu billah, they stop them from doing it, which is paradise. Trying every possible means in preventing them young people, young Muslims, uh, from practicing Islam and thus entering paradise. Where are they from the courageous companions who taught no other uh, than jihad to their children? They taught, them, uh, they taught them archery, swimming, horse riding, how to be brave, strong, courageous, warriors. Where are they from Sulaiman, Solomon, Prophet Sulaiman, who said tonight, I will go to a hundred of my ladies, a hundred of my ladies, who each of whom would conceive and deliver a night fighting for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. That was his dream. You know what was his dream? Of going to a hundred of his ladies, conceiving each one of them, uh, a night that will fight in the cause of Allah Ta'ala. A hundred and one night. Man, he's a strong man, isn't he? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma ja'na matahawla. And then he did not say, inshallah. One of his companions said, say inshallah. He did not say inshallah. However, after that, only one of them conceived. One of them conceived and she gave birth to what? A part of a man. Muhammad وسلم, said to us, well, the one in whose hands my soul is. If he had have said inshallah, if he had have said inshallah, all of the ladies would have conceived and all of them would have given birth to knights fighting in his way, in Allah Ta'ala's way. Allahu Akbar. This is our intention, brothers and sisters, that we want to have children 
and offer them as soldiers defending Islam, loving Islam, 